Hello, and welcome to Archon Miniature Worlds. Today I'm going to be making a diorama out of a vintage children's gas mask. The first thing I'm going to do is to cut and shape the foam to make a head shape to fit inside the mask. This process is a lot of cutting and gluing to make sure you get the right shape so that it will fit inside the mask snugly. So while I'm building up this foam head, I wanted to talk a little bit about the inspiration for this piece. It's mainly composed of two sections, the playground on top of the head as well as the two city scenes within the eyes. I see this piece as a loss of childhood innocence, but despite witnessing so much war and destruction, it's still just the simple swing set that's on the child's mind. After the foam head is constructed, it's time to prepare the inside for the dioramas inside of each of the eyes. Each eye contains a small nuclear cloud as well as a city scene. These will be constructed using small 3D printed buildings as well as wireframe, cotton, and LEDs to make up the clouds. Then the inside will be painted black, covered in black wool to create the sky, and the props placed in before the mask is sealed. Now that the interior of the head is complete, it's time to fill the gaps on the outside and prepare it to be sealed in permanently. I'm using regular spackle here from a home improvement store to fill in the gaps. After the gaps are filled, the surface is sanded down and then sealed with a gloss Mod Podge coat for stability and safety.
coat of Mod Podge complete, it's time to move on to the mounting of the head. Because I want the mask to be suspended through the breathing tube, I'm using twisted galvanized wire to create a rigid frame within the tube. Now with the mounting wire set in place with epoxy putty, it's time to move on to gap filling in between the mask and the foam head. To do this, I'm using a mixture of dirt and Mod Podge to create a mud texture. After the texture place is applied to all the gaps, the next step is to paint the surface so that when foliage is applied, there is no other colors poking through that are not desired. The next part of the diorama I'm going to build is the main tree that sits on top of the head. To do this, I'm cutting a bunch of garden wire that's all the same length, and I'm going to twist it together using an electric drill to create the trunk of the tree. The next part of the tree is the canopy, and to make this, 
I'm going to be using chunks of insulation foam whittled down into oblong shapes and then glued together to create the canopy. Now that the tree is fully constructed, it's time to add the texture to the trunk and the leaves. The trunk texture is added by mixing a two-part epoxy putty and using that to sculpt the details of the wood. Taking a break from the tree, we're going to add some roots to the bottom of the mask. These roots are made by Spanish moss and some more of that mud texture I used earlier to fill gaps. The tree trunk and the surrounding mud then gets painted brown. After that, it's time to paint some 3D printed playground equipment. And now finally, leaves are added onto the tree. This is done using hot glue and my own homemade flocking mixture. Now, before I show you the finished product, there were a few final steps which I couldn't film just due to how awkward it was to put together. These include applying the static grass, as well as mounting the mask to the filter itself and making sure that it's stable enough to stand on its own. But with that being said, Let's see the final product. Hope you enjoyed this diorama build and if you're excited to see what I make next hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed this build hit the like button. If you've got any suggestions for upcoming builds or things I should have done differently for this build drop a comment down below. Also if you're interested in owning this piece for yourself I'll put a link to my Etsy shop in the description. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you later.